Amy. Hi, Christy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Good. So today we're going to talk about tips for lash newbies. Are you excited? So excited. This is one of my favorite topics. Fantastic. So first we're going to start off with a little bit of an introduction about ourselves and who we are. Um, then we're going to get into the tips for lash newbies and talk about product usage tips, application tips, some awesome booking apps and intake and consent forms, why they are so important and managing client expectations. Then we're going to talk about some other mentionables that we may have, some notes to add at the end for all of our lash newbies out there. And we're going to do a little recap and then there's going to be a discount at the end. How's that sound, Amy? <laughs> good? Sounds great to me. A discount on anything sounds good right now. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So let's keep going. So introduction. Uh, we're going to talk about, my name is Christy, and this is Amy uh, joining me here today. Um, and let's move on. So this is me. Um, I'm director of operations at House of Glam and Lash Legend. Um, if you're not following House of Glam already, please do um, go check out our website. The details are at the bottom of the page here, houseofglam.ca. And my personal social is, um, is influential artistry. So you'll see lots of tips there for all of you guys. I like to post about training and um, some product tips, application tips, everything that just go stay tuned. Have a look at that. And here's Amy. So this is me, very, <laughs> very made up, which is not normal anymore. But um, I'm the lead educator here at House of Glam, and I am super thrilled to share with you the tips and tricks that I wish I would have known starting out. Because when I first started out, we kind of talked about how. Back then, adhesive was like five to seven second dry time, and you kind of had lashes that look like tree stumps, yada, yada, and now they're like perfect, pretty fibers, and they're made of synthetic material that's not mink and things like that, and it's been a total game changer from where even the products were, how the education is, uh, and we've learned so much over the course of the time that I've been in it, and these are the things, like if I could just go back to baby lashing Amy and say, hey, just do these, so much heartache would have been avoided. <laughs> I remember when I first started lashing, there was only like B curl and C curl. There was no D curl. There was no volume lashing. It was 0.15s or 0.2s, nothing underneath that. It mm -hmm. was, uh, yeah, it was a different time. <laughs> That's for sure. Boring, okay? Yeah, the good old days. <laughs> so, Let's go back to um, tips for lash newbies. So I guess one of the most important things um, would be product usage and how to take care of your adhesive. Do you have any tips for our viewers? So I think what people forget is that I think the most important tool you have is tweezers and I would have to disagree because you could probably if you really tried hard enough get some chopsticks or something and throw adhesive or throw some lashes on but if you don't have a good adhesive you won't be able to be successful and if that is the product you need the most you have to treat it like gold mm -hmm. one of the thing I've noticed with new students is that they use adhesive for months and months because it's one of the more expensive products or they don't shake the adhesive. Simply what it boils down to is that they don't understand how important it is to know exactly what, why, and how to use a product. So my personal favorite adhesive is actually rock adhesive. I'm waiting on a new batch and I'm stoked. Um, but the thing of it is, is it has a great dry time. It's something that you can use to crystallize fans. It is great in its consistency, especially in my climate where it can be super dry or super humid. So knowing that, knowing how it works and learning how it works for you personally is what you have to do. You don't want to spend a ton of time buying 7,000 different adhesives because I'm going to tell you a trick. They're pretty much really similar. You just have to find one preferably in the company that you're purchasing from normally that works for you and then learn how to adapt to it. Um, one thing that's great, Amy, one thing to add is that I do you ever find that people tend to blame the adhesive 
instead of blaming their environment or they put blame on the adhesive. They say the adhesive is not working, need to find a new one instead of trying to troubleshoot and see what's going on there. Yes, a lack of patience is so common because you'll get that first text from that new client and they will say, all my lashes fell off and you go, oh, it must be your fault. It's definitely not my fault or it's definitely not my adhesive's fault. Right. What I can tell you is in the beginning, it's probably mainly you. And understanding that adhesive gives you the opportunity to really truly be able to stand behind your brand and your product and say, no, no, something else is going on here that we need to dig into for sure. But blaming the adhesive is a waste of time, especially when you're new in the game. You don't know it yet. And we get that too as um, distributors of adhesives that well, like we stand by, we love them, they work really great. And then every now and again, you'll have to troubleshoot with a customer to see what is going on besides the adhesive itself. Right, right, exactly. All righty. So besides adhesive, he, adhesive is definitely the main point of, of that we were hitting on here today. Um, also, old adhesive needs to be thrown out. You mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, shaking adhesive, I find that people do not shake it enough and they tend to use the clear top. Um, sometimes if you don't shake it, you get like a little bit of a clear adhesive that comes out before the black. Mm -hmm. um, so that is all I have to say about that. Um, application tips. So when you are starting out, I think that the most important thing is isolation. And that is, um, I always teach students to isolate with two tweezers first, just until they get the hang of it. And then they can start isolating with one if they're comfortable. But the most important thing I find is isolation when it comes to application. Let's well, and it'll save you so much heartache, right? If you already understand that you are a little bit slower with picking up your fans or picking up your classic lash, whatever it may be. If you understand that you isolated that lash 100% and you let the adhesive fully cure, you're never going to have questions whether or not you're damaging natural lashes because you can't. You've already mastered that isolation and no other lashes are getting stuck to that specific one that you placed. Exactly. And when things are getting stuck, you need to slow down and see how much adhesive you're using to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, so if you're struggling, struggling with isolation, I definitely recommend that you um, take your time, um, apply, apply lashes in a way that it's better to have 10 lashes on applied properly versus applying a full set that is stuck together, not isolated properly. Right. Yeah. So um, that was all I had to say about isolation. Do you have anything to add there? I would say being willing to slow down. I think when you first begin in the game, you and I always call it the lash game. I don't know why. Maybe I'll come up with another term, but it feels like a game in the beginning. It feels like a race, something you're trying to truly win at the end. And it's not about winning. It's not about getting to the end and then having this big parade at the end, you're going to have a parade at the end for yourself, no matter what, because you got some banging work there, but it doesn't matter if it takes you four hours or two, if your isolation is crappy, because you'll end up building for yourself a reputation that you don't want. And in a small town like mine, you want to build the best reputation you can right out of the gate. I kind of cheated because I'd already been doing lashes in Salt Lake for a long time and coming here, I could just build from there. But if you're new and starting in a town, you want to make sure that you are, even if you're going slow, even if you're taking your time, it shouldn't be an even if, it's because you're going slow, because you're taking your time. You can ensure that your lash clients are gonna be your lash clients for years to come because their lashes are always healthy and there's always something <laughs> to stick a synthetic lash to. Definitely quality over quantity. You're right, it is not a rush. Every time, <laughs> no. Sometimes, and that's the thing too that I think about often is that people will look at my booking site and they're like, Amy, you sometimes take two hours for a volume fill. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, I do. Yeah. I have no problem saying anything <laughs> like, yeah, that's my time. That is my time for my client. And they pay for that time. And I'm going to give them all the time that they need in order to get them a full, like it's supposed to look like a full set when you're done again. And you know, 
sometimes I don't need two hours, but if I give myself that time, I don't have to stress and lashing is a breeze. And then if you have a little break at the end, that's even more of a benefit for you. So um, oh, true. I, I know that when I started, I definitely wasn't booking enough time between clients. It was super busy, especially when we opened up a studio. Um, mm -hmm. We had to increase our booking times because we had people sitting there waiting because you didn't want to do a bad job and you didn't want to rush people out the door. So um, it's definitely good to book extra time, make sure you have time to clean up afterwards. And especially when people come, like clients will write you and say, oh, I have almost all of my lashes left, but they haven't been back in like two or two weeks or so, you know that they need a lot removed. Yeah, they're still growing. You're going to be spending that amount of time removing lashes and applying new ones. So application tips. Yeah. Um, I would, another thing I want to note is, um, when applying lashes in the very beginning, you want to make sure that you're applying the lashes it that's so that it's not, they are not touching the skin. I find that, um, people try to get really close to the lid, but sometimes they're getting too close. They need to be, uh, 0 0.05 or 0.5 millimeters. What am I saying? Amy, help me out here. 0.5. 0.5. Right? right. Point five. <laughs> Am I right? I don't know. 0 0.05? Somewhere away from yes. the a half a millimeter. Half there we a go. Millimeter. There we go. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Away from the lash line. So you're not uh, getting <laughs> adhesive on the lash line. Um, it's better to be too far away than too close at first. Yeah. Especially in the beginning. And remember that extra time in the fills that you have you can, you know, go back through and work on that distance to the lash line as you go. Yes. Um, two, 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 two. Okay, I wanted to touch on booking apps. Um, I do find that at first you, I know that when I started, I wasn't using a booking app. I was putting everybody in a little notebook and I wasn't taking credit card information or taking any uh, deposits or anything like that. And that will burn you. <laughs> so fast. Yeah. So your time is valuable. And even if you're just starting, it's better to start from the very beginning and have clients that respect you and respect your time. Yeah, I agree with that. And the biggest thing too, Christy, that I found is that when I'm in these lash groups and stuff, and I'm getting questions in my DMs daily about, um, well, this client, you know, no showed me today or this client, this, or this client, this, and I'm thinking that all could have been avoided. Every single second of your heartache could have been avoided had you taken a credit card from that client. And then the answer always inevitably is, yeah, but then they won't book with me. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have this moment of conversation and frustration with me. So you may as well get the clients that you want right out of the gate that are willing to put their credit card on file for you, as opposed to the clients that are like, ah, I could show up or I don't have to, whatever. This just dissolves all of that right out of the gate and it sends them text reminders it sends them emails all that kind of jazz so really you can be lazy and focus on lashing and nothing more exactly exactly next one all right so that's another thing too is that a lot of booking apps can actually create a even create a consent form in the app so they can have it signed before they come to you and then if there's any questions or any issues you can address them before they even uh, your client even arrives um, you definitely 100% always need an intake and a consent form. This will cover your ass. You do not want any issues down the road with um, you don't want any trouble. <laughs> Yeah. avoid it at all costs and be smart be exactly. smart have a consent form exactly um also right now you would need a, a covid form and if you're in an area that needs passports you need to be checking that as well um mm -hmm. and what is your area like now do you need a, a passport no we still have a full mask mandate okay. in public areas so we do too I mean, yeah. yeah too bad <laughs> so check uh we also have to check like passports but i guess it depends where you are yeah i mean we had that for a moment um but then the this i mean in washington we're one of the most protected states as far as mask mandates and stuff so i mean they're important if you go to a restaurant and stuff right. but in the salon world it's just like too bad masks that's it no question 
So it's it's super important to keep up to date on your government regulations. Make sure you're following all of that properly. And if you're and liability reasons, you definitely need an intake and intake, do a proper intake and have a consent form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Oops, I keep going past. Here we go. So Ready other, to roll. <laughs> so other mentionables, one of these would be market research. So you want to make sure see who's in your area, what kind of work they're producing, um, what um, prices they're charging. Everywhere is a little bit different depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. It's good to do your research in that way. 100%. One of the things too that always gets me um my husband actually owns a business on the in Bellingham, and he owns a detail shop but then there are all these car lots there's everyone from hyundai to honda to audi to porsche to whatever and the best way that he put it to me is he said that a, you don't necessarily want to be the Hyundai where you have to sell 20 of the cars. You also don't necessarily want to be a Ferrari where you literally sell one for every 20 that Hyundai sells. And he said, the best way to do it is to keep yourself right in that high end BMW, Audi, Range Rover, whatever, still a luxury item, because then you have room to discount if you need to, but then people are still going to pay that price for your product, knowing you're giving a great product, but you don't have to burn yourself out as a Hyundai and you don't have to never see a client as a Ferrari, but maybe once a year, you kind of put yourself that. in that sweet <laughs> spot. You know what I mean? So my goal was always to be an Audi. That was my plan. Right. <laughs> not too high, not too low, right in between. That is excellent. That is great. Exactly. You do not want to be um, so far out there that you're not getting clients at all. And mm -hmm. depends on the area and how much people are making in your area and everything like that. And then you do not want to be the bottom of the barrel either. So you want to be at a price that you're pricing for yourself, you're pricing for your, for your talent and your education and making sure that um, you're still bringing in clients. That's great. Um, and so the next uh, topic was we be patient. Um, so you need to make sure that you are you have to be patient in gaining clients. Um, you do not you have to be able to work for them. Um, mm -hmm. They don't just can't just they don't all just come to you. You need to be able to show your work, show that you're knowledgeable. Your social media is huge right now. Um, when I was, um, when I started, it was mostly word of mouth. Yeah. How I got clients. Yeah. And I think that's still kind of the way it is now too. I'd agree with that. I think it, there's kind of a hefty balance, especially if you're in smaller places like we are, like, you know, you, it's definitely, I mean, all businesses are like that too, but understanding like, you know, your market and being patient. And in the beginning, the thing that I found with new students recently, and this isn't to dig on anyone personally, but they don't post on social media every day. And I don't care if you don't have anything to post, post on social media every single day and not just a post. You also have to post on your story. The other thing is show up. Even if you're shy, you got to get up on there and show your face because no, I'm not a shy person. And I know that. And most of you on here who follow me know I show up all the time. I'm not shy. I love to speak in front of people, but that's not, that's not to say what it isn't difficult for me some days to still show up on my social media there, even when you're having a bad day or whatever, post a picture of a flower or a lash you know, model that you aspire to be more like that lash artist or something, you know, making sure that you do show up every day is what will boost your posts and boost your popularity, thus creating a client, a steady client in, intake through your business, which is what we all want to have. And if you're not showing up and you're just like, oh, I can't get clients. And I look at your Instagram and you haven't posted in two months. Yeah sorry, that's the way that it is. You're not interacting with your people enough and they need to see your face. The biggest thing, the biggest hits I have are posts about my dog, me and really great lash posts. And then even when I go on 30 minute long rants on my story, I still get people once a month that are like, Hey, that spoke to me. Hey, I watched your every single video you posted this month, guys, 
If you think you're talking too much, keep doing it because it gets you clients and it gets you lifelong clients. It gets, it builds trust and a relationship with them. It's a different way to connect with people before you even meet them. So it's great. It's great. If you're, so if you're not, if you're talking on your social media and you have someone that's equivalent, um, maybe in skill and they're not talking on theirs, you're going to get the clients 100% because you're the one that's going to always be in their head. Yep. Yeah. You think your face is annoying, but it's really pretty encouraging to book with you. (laughs) Uh, yeah. And everyone, I feel like at first, like they find it really, um, like really intimidating to be able to, to get on camera and not everyone is, feels comfortable, but if it gets easier, um, I know that when I started and opened a business, I found it a little bit, I, a little hard and sometimes it still is. So just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and it will get easier. I think you froze, Amy. Amen. Am I here now? Yeah, I'm back. (laughs) All right. So a little a little recap here now. So we talked about um, using products correctly makes all of the difference. Um, Learning to apply lashes right at the beginning will lead to success. Protect yourself. Um, Get a booking app, one hundred percent. Client intake and consent forms are super important and manage your client's expectations to avoid improvement. That is one thing that we just didn't um, discuss, but is on this recap. So what we mean by that is make sure that when your client comes in, say, um, if they have really, really short lashes and they want 15 millimeter lashes, but they, you know that they can only hold like a 10, um, make sure that you let them know that and talk to them about that. And your, it's your job to educate your client, not do what they want all the Tell time. Tell them no. Tell <laughs> them no. Just keep in mind that you are the expert. You are the professional. So they're paying you for your expertise. So if they're in your chair, you've already got them there. So get them hooked on a different length because those 15s, baby, don't always work for everybody. And you don't want to um, lose your reputation either for applying something that is damaging to a client because they will, they will talk about it and word will get around. So you don't want to lose your reputation there. Yep. No time for that. We want you around. Lashing for a long time. <laughs> All right. So uh, that is all for us today. That was fun, Amy. Super fun. More often. Yeah, we should. (laughs) Thank you everyone for joining us. And there's going to be, when we jump off here, there will be a discount at the end. Um, And thanks for joining me today, Amy. Anytime. And we're going to say bye. Bye. (laughs) Have a great day. You.